assembled a, a, a high-level array of uh, speakers. Let me introduce them. So to my left, we have uh, Ater. Ater is the director of the uh, central PPP unit uh, in Egypt. Uh, uh, and he manages uh, feasibility studies, uh, preparation and tendering of uh, PPP projects uh, across uh, the various sectors, utilities, transportation, health, uh, education, uh, communication, and also tasked with uh, sort of generating the, the, the PPP pipeline uh, of projects. Next, we have uh, Morgan on my right. Uh, Morgan is senior project manager at the uh, Global Infrastructure Basel Foundation. Uh, GIB, uh, together with uh, Bloomberg, has been appointed as the manager and the operational uh, secretariat uh, to, to, to operate the, the label uh, jointly. And Morgan plays a, a pivotal role in overseeing this deployment of uh, a fast infra label. Uh, and her responsibilities include uh, project pipeline development and uh, facilitating the operationalization of the label uh, through, uh, in particular, forging strategic partnerships with uh, the, the, the various players involved. And next we have Ori. Uh, so Ori is the chief content uh, officer at the Global Infrastructure Hub. We have GIB and we have GIH. So the Global Infra Hub, uh, part of the uh, G20, um, he leads strategy and delivery of uh, initiatives uh, and has been representing the GI Hub at the G20 Infrastructure Working Group uh, and at the G20 Sustainable Finance Working Group. He's also responsible for the GI Hub online data research and tools. Um, and last but not least, we have Jean-Christophe. Uh, uh, Jean-Christophe is an international mediator and uh, serve as the executive director of WAP. So you should be familiar with him by now. Uh, if you attended the previous sessions, he's gained experience with uh, Bombardier, uh, a number of uh, big uh, names in the uh, uh, contracting and infrastructure industry, and today specializes in uh, governance and uh, deal mediation uh, as a performance catalyst uh, for better PPPs. Um, so, Without further ado, let's um, jump and kick off the, the session with uh, an overview of the Fast Infra label. And I'll ask uh, first uh, Morgan to present the label. Over to you, Laura. Thanks, Francois. Uh, and thank you all for joining uh, today's, uh, today's presentation of the Fast uh, Infra label. Um, so I think I'll try to first uh, give you a picture of what uh, this fast uh, of what the fast infra label is, and how. Okay, can everyone hear me? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, what the fast uh, infra label is, and how and how in fact it can really help channel uh, funds towards uh, sustainable infrastructure, and especially focusing on emer emerging markets. So, fast infra label should be seen as a as a one stop shop uh, that we are. Uh, that we are developing. What I mean by fast uh, one-stop shop is that we are building fast infra label as a meta standard. So we are building fast infra label as a standard that builds on other existing standards. So to name a few, the EU taxonomy, uh, QII, and also local uh, standards and frameworks. Um, and so the idea is for projects when they will be reporting on their sustainability uh, on the usual um, ESG criteria, so gender, climate, um, governance, uh, will be reporting on what is existing al already with the mean that we are creating today uh, on uh, the platform that we are creating, so the fast infra platform. So that's a bit uh, setting the scene. Um, and we believe that uh, fast infra label can really be um, a success um, in, the, in the future. Um, and we are building this uh, today. And I think trying to today give you like a few of the of the success factors uh, of the of the label. So I think there are sli uh, our slides. Not too sure how to. If we can just move the slides, please. But not too sure how it works. Um, so the success factors. Uh, there is the why. The why is that the fast infra label really. Uh, answers a need from the market. We are um, creating a tool that, yep, but I cannot, uh, 
Um, there was a clear ask from the private sector to enable more of their funds to be towarded to uh, sustainable infrastructure, and that is what we are aiming to do with uh, this label. And one more, please. Yeah. Uh, so that's the, the why. Uh, the other success factor is really the who. The who is who is behind uh, who is behind the, the label, and those are both who are, is at the initiative of the label and who is in our governance bodies. And then there is the how. The how is um, the platform that we are creating with our partners from Bloomberg, who are really creating like a, a digital, very intuitive uh, platform that will be user friendly. So I'll just uh, quickly uh, go through those points. Um, the who, uh, how was FAST initiated? So FAST uh, was created in 2020 by a uh, multi-stakeholder initiative uh, led by HSBC, uh, GIF, the, uh, the World Bank with IFC, um, with OECD, and under the auspice of the One Planet Summit uh, led by uh, President Macron. Uh, seeing that this group uh, was really um, uh, creating this tool and the fast group to channel private uh, investments towards sustainable economies, more joined, uh, more joined the initiative, and especially the private sector. So Meridian, Macquarie, uh, but also many DFIs um, and uh, other MDBs. And this led today to our governance bodies, which who, uh, whom are supporting our initiative on a daily basis and whom we are showing, showing here uh, on, the, um, uh, on the picture. Um, and here what we are seeing is that really we, the initiative that we are creating, this label, is really backed by a tremendous uh, group, uh, very powerful in the infrastructure sector. Um, so that's the why and the who. Uh, going to the how, um, what, we will, what we are developing today with our partner from Bloomberg is a, a platform, a digital platform, where projects, uh, will be able to go to, so a website, where projects will be able to go to and really report on their, on their sustainability in a very intuitive process. The idea here is to create something that is quick, efficient, intuitive, uh, where projects are able to quickly give their sustainability data against our framework. And maybe here we can, uh, maybe one more, please. Uh, yeah, against our sustainability framework, which is declined under like four, uh, four dimensions that you are seeing with the four boxes and then uh, specific uh, criteria underneath. Um, and this, provided that they answer all this with the, the right answers, I would say, uh, this would give them already one step towards the fast infra label. And this is something they will be able to showcase uh, to uh, other, uh, other, other, other investors. And the idea here, what we are trying to do with this intuitive tool, is to enable all projects to apply, and especially all stages of projects, and especially focusing on projects in development, the ones that are the most in need of, um, of, in, of, uh, of um, funds, and that are really struggling to find, find those funds. And by working with the people that we, sh we showed before, and by giving this, this label, and really bridging the two, this is how we are aiming to um, get the, uh, get those people invest uh, invest in those projects, and this have this uh, private capital trickle da trickle down to those projects which are sustain sustainable and have this really this um, uh, this credibility factor uh, that is here. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> uh, so now I'll try to give you a bit of a, a picture of where we are. Um, so A, I think what's really important to say is that the Fast Infra label is live, it's running, and we really encourage you to, to apply, uh, and there are different means to apply, um, and I, I also encourage you to go to our website, thefastinfralabel.com, to see how you could, uh, how you could participate uh, towards the, towards the, the label. Um, so the, lab the label is live, and what we've been doing this year is that we've been focusing on uh, energy projects, the ones that we've been hearing from people yesterday, the ones that are uh, really attracting the most financing, where the, the people are most looking into it, uh, and therefore we've been focusing on those projects. And today we, are pro we have like PV and wind projects that are under assessment. 
this was 2023, 2024, we really opened uh, we really opened the um, the label towards more projects, more geographies, um, and more technologies. And therefore, again, I uh, really encouraging you to uh, to apply. So, if you have uh, like a rail project, if you have a wastewater, this will become available as time uh, as time goes. Um, and then, what does it mean to to apply? So here, maybe if we can, <laughs> maybe one more. Perfect. Thanks. So, what does it mean to apply? So the, there are four steps to the four steps to the to the application, which are broken. So four steps that are, can be split into to two bigger categories. The one on the left hand side, which is uh, which leads to the self assessed um, label, and the one on the right hand side that leads to the fast infra verified label. So the one on the left hand side is the one I was mentioning, which is an automated tool, quick, easy, and most importantly free. Um, so here projects projects apply, go through the go through the assessment, report on their data, and um, provided that they meet all the criteria, will receive a self-assessed label. This self-assessed label, they will be projects will be able to use it. Uh, and to communicate on this, this will be a recognized label understood by all. And then a verification a verification process. This will require a third party. <laughs> Um, which will lead to the f really the fast infra label. This here we it's, uh, people will need to projects will need to pay, which uh, today we are planning on a 25k uh, US dollar um, uh, cost, which we plan to be minimal as opposed to the price of the the cost of the overall capex of the project that we are uh, today uh, today mentioning, and maybe just to the timing door to door today we are planning on three four months. So it, within three, four months, you can have like within like one week, two weeks, you can have the first stage, the fast infra label, or even one day if you're really quick. And then three, four months, you can have the fast infra label. Um, and I'll finish by saying that all this and why we're on stage today, um, we are really tailoring like what is really important for us and how this is all going to work because we can have like the best tool, we can have the best people behind. What we need at the end is the uptake and projects and institution really uptaking the uptaking the, the label and here we are really tailoring the uptake towards different uh, groups of people so obviously we encourage uh, projects to apply uh, this is one end but then we are also working with uh, funds uh, and here you can ha you can see like the pentagreen fund uh, which is publicly co publicly communicating on this uh, whereby like funds are uptaking the label in their investment strategies and we're also working like with dfis also to uptake to have like funds which are really tailored to the fast infra label. Uh, and lastly, PPP units, which uh, here I think it's the, would be the perfect opportunity uh, in this label to really see how we can work with PPP units um, for them to have the, integrate the fast infra label in their, um, in their mandate, in their tendering process, in their procurement process. So uh, I'll stop here. I think uh, hopefully I gave a, a bit of a, an overview of the fast infra label. In, indeed, and in any case, uh, you, you'll have access to uh, uh, the, 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 sort of the websites and, uh, and further resource uh, uh, information, and we'll, we'll have a few flyers here for you to uh, take uh, away at the end of the session. Okay, so now we, we've seen basically what the, uh, this initiative is about, a, a multi-stakeholder market-led initiative, one that is designed to be as user-friendly as possible, uh, and, and to generate uh, increased interest uh, from uh, private investors in those projects that would have been deemed sustainable through the, the label. Uh, now, I'd like to turn to practitioners and uh, get the, the, the sense of the, the need for sustainability. We, we are in 2023, uh, that is halfway through the uh, 2030 deadline assigned to both the uh, Sustainable Development Goal Agenda by the UN and the Paris Accord on, on climate change. So we're halfway, but we're nowhere near where we should be uh, in terms of reaching uh, targets. Uh, and, and maybe uh, one issue that is uh, uh, at stake here is indeed this uh, sometimes the blurriness about what sustainability means, how to define and assess sustainability. If you've ever tried to look at the various uh, 
benchmark standards uh, uh, on the market. This is a very fragmented landscape, frankly, uh, an alphabet soup of uh, acronyms uh, uh, ranging from regional, sectoral, uh, multilateral uh, uh, standards. Uh, and, and it doesn't make things easy and life easier for those investors, those project developers or sponsors that want to refer to the, the right uh, uh, the, the, the right benchmark in order to uh, uh, position that, that project as fully sustainable. So um, uh, I'd like now our, our practitioners to share with us their perspectives, uh, well, the, the, the kind of challenges they are currently facing in uh, defining and uh, assessing what is or should be sustainable infrastructure. Uh, and let's start with you, uh, Atta, from the uh, Egypt uh, point of view. Uh, how do you see this issue of sustainability infrastructure and the specific uh, dimensions that may apply to Egypt? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Actually, uh, I want to start with the, 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 uh, the name of the initiative, which is the Fast Infra. And, uh, it's very good to have the world fast because in the PPs it takes time <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the world fast encourages a little bit. Uh, I, I want to, to start saying here that the, the main problem that we face in financing the PP projects, especially when we're moving our PP portfolio to green uh, financing and green projects, uh, more than one challenge. The first is what to do to be green, how to fulfill the requirements of the financiers to be eligible for this finance. This is like a moving target for us. And I think, or I believe that this initiative would put, put things together and put people together, the financiers and the projects, and uh, uh, as a prospect user for this uh, uh, platform, I hope to meet uh, the financiers on one table and to have something rigid and uh, robust that we can go for. Uh, the second thing is the accessibility. If we're going green, how to access this green funds? But the problem is that, well, that we're facing, and I think that this is all the PP projects in the world, we now have to add the layer of climate change and the green uh, uh, projects. This is, a, and we are adding a layer of sophistication, which is important and we have to do it. This is a mandate for everybody. But on the other hand, we're adding a layer of cost, okay, and investment. The main thing that would mitigate this extra cost, okay, is the green funding that's available, but very rarely accessible. So I believe that I hope that the, the fast infra would uh, put things together and have ends to meet. Uh, the last thing in this issue is how to tender out a PPP project under the green uh, uh, layer and how to manage this project after that. So how to put the KPIs that would address these uh, 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 goals okay throughout the contract management not throughout the the tendering only it starts i believe it starts from the selecting the the advisors and putting the mandates of the advisors through the feasibility studies tendering contracting and then managing the contract this is the kind of knowledge that the ppp units need to 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 understand so i would recommend that the first infra would give some kind of awareness on how to access the funds, how to get this uh, uh, financing of sustainable infrastructure comes to reality, and building the capacity. I know that the WAP, we're working with them, this would be one of the uh, uh, coming uh, uh, workshops and, and mandates, but I think with the first infra and focusing on finances, financing sustainable infrastructure, I, I'm just recommending that we, as a PPB units, we need this. Thank you. 
Thank you, Tess. So uh, we've just heard the, the, the standpoint from a, the head of a PPP unit, from the government's uh, standpoint. Let now turn to uh, Henri and from the, the G20 perspective, uh, how, how to go from the, the G20 uh, high-level QII principles to uh, assessing projects on the ground. We, we've seen that the, the fast infra doesn't intend to reinvent the wheel. We're relying on a number of high-level uh, uh, standards, uh, the IFC performance standards, the equator principles, uh, and the GII uh, uh, quality uh, uh, infrastructure uh, investment principles. How do we go from that level to the operational stage uh, on a project basis. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I think at the um, the G20 has sort of grappled uh, with that issue around standards. Uh, I think if I look back three, four years ago, there was not a lot of consensus, but the G20 agreed on the QI principles, uh, which I think is a is a good high level framework around what is sustainable, what is green. So it goes, uh, it includes efficiency, economic development, resilience, uh, sustainability, etc. cetera. Um, it, there's still, uh, I don't, there's no consensus at the moment on having one standard among governments. Uh, there's obviously different different views as to what the minimum requirements are, uh, but I think it's encouraging to see that even at G20, despite those differences, we are moving towards uh, you know testing out, implementing at the moment the QI principles. So I think QI principles are kind of like a, an overarching framework uh, that's helpful for government to understand what what it will take uh, to move projects uh, and to integrate more sustainability within them. Uh, I kind of see fast infrastructure as kind of like the next step, the next step after that. Uh, those, the, as I said, the QR idea is not to develop standards based on this. It's more to advance the framework so that we can have uh, standards that will uh, basically borrow from from this framework and then be applied to uh, applied to, to to projects. So that's basically basically where we are now. Uh, w when I look at what's What's ahead, I guess, uh, because as you know, PPP need expert or you know consultant, etc. You may wonder why should I uh, invest time in understanding the fast infra label if those things are still evolving? And we know there are other standards. What I would say is that at least from the government perspective, and I'll talk about the private sector after that, there's clearly uh, a view that again has changed over the past few years that it will happen. Uh, we're not exactly sure uh, which standard, etc., but there's definitely recognition that we need those standards. Uh, and so I think for any project that you may be preparing at the moment, if you're not, uh, you know, using, if you're not trying to sort of develop the, the data, the data points, and trying to get uh, th that label or other labels uh, inside your project, you're probably going to face issues further down the road. Uh, and the beauty with those standards, and Fast Info in particular, is that it was developed from existing other standards. So we're not, like, like you were saying, we're not reinventing the wheel. And so investing in getting the data and getting the recognition from that label will be useful no matter what happens afterwards. Uh, so that's definitely the view from the public sector. And from the private sector side, and I'll probably let other speakers um, talk about that a little bit more, when we developed uh, two years ago uh, the official G20 framework for accelerating private investment in sustainable infrastructure that was endorsed by all the G20 leaders, standard was actually one of the key pillars. Um, and the, that framework was developed not only with the G20 uh, governments, but with all the MDBs and with around sort of 50% of all the private sector uh, investors. And again, there we, we heard even more strongly that they were all looking for A standards. Uh, they need that so that they, they can defend, uh, you know, they can actually get projects that will then be attractive to secondary market. At the moment, if you're a private investor, you know that uh, even if, if you don't have the standards yet, the assets that you're going to invest in, at some point you're going to have to, you know, you're going to probably sort of sell it or sell shares in it. And you know that the market has moved tremendously uh, over the past few years. So you know you're going to need those data points. You're going to need the certainty that that project will fill uh, that secondary market so that you can actually resell your assets. So I think really from a government perspective and private sector perspective, this is this is happening, and I think fast because it, it was developed uh, in partnership with the private sector and borrows from existing frameworks. Really gives you, I think, the you know great platform to to start uh, you know building 
you know, your portfolio of green projects, regardless of what may happen in sort of three, five years. There might be evolution, convergence of those standards, but I would say at this stage that doesn't really matter. I think you yeah, should definitely sort of um, uh, invest time in those because this is, like I say, this is happening uh, both from the government side and from the private sector side. Thank you, Henry. Um, now turning to uh, Jean-Christophe, so we heard the, the view from the government side, the sort of more maybe strategic or helicopter view from the G20 side. From a, a, a PPP practitioner on the ground, how do you assess the, the need for, for such a, a, a sustainability uh, label? We know sustainability uh, is a key dimension, should be a key dimension of a PPP project life cycle, but how do you see at the, the sort of uh, uh, articulation that uh, could be uh, implemented. Thank you for this interesting question, Francois. Let's jump right into what is sustainable. That will very much depend on the asset class, because if you look at transportation projects or m mobility, I mean, there's so many different uh, ways of applying PPPs. It will very much depend on what do you consider sustainable in that specific asset class. So I think first there needs to be sort of a so a, a, a classification, what type of uh, asset do you declare sustainable? And that will be very different depending on the country you're currently in. Uh, just looking back at what happened with EU taxonomy, at the beginning everything was gas and uh, nuclear energy was not considered sustainable by some countries. So again there, there's going to probably be some discussion uh, what is considered sustainable. Um, and at the same time, there's also, it's not PPP specific. We're looking at a labeling system that is for this very vast uh, infrastructure, right? <laughs> so uh, I, while I salute that there are efforts being undertaken to try to create harmonization with this fast infra uh, group uh, initiative, we see that there are also different other standards competing with that, I mean, just to name a few, like uh, the Blue Dot Network that was set up also a bit as a reaction to deficiencies that were seen with Belt and Road that were looked at from a certain perspective. There's also the Peers Network, uh, a framework that is a self-evaluation methodology that was set up specifically uh, for public-private partnerships at the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. Now, how does that all feed together? There are efforts also to use um, technology, like uh, 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 platforms, like uh, the source, uh, sustainable infrastructure, uh, uh, sustainable infrastructure foundation uh, platform that uh, is trying to have a project preparation pipeline, and fast infra um, also working on making open source access to have uh, you know something that of the of the fast infra level and how it will how it will help uh, projects and at the end like governments and the whole uh, infra infra space. Um, so there are a few I think a few keywords that we are showing here, but I'll I'll, I'll put a, a voice over them. Uh, a the first the standardization. Uh, here it's to understand that the fast infra label, its projects are all reporting against the same criteria, and this um, this will bring like a clear signal to the market of what is a sustainable infrastructure on the basis that we are all assessing infrastructure the same way. So really, this uh, this standardization. Like yesterday, we heard a lot of the word uh, playbook, and I think here it's really what we are trying to address, like st standardize, give rules. Then the second point is transparency and data. Uh, again, yesterday we, we heard a lot of the, the, the need for data, and I think it's, uh, um, it's been uh, said uh, again just, be, the, just before. The idea is that uh, the fast infra label will ask for data, data which will be available to, to investors. Um, and so it will bridge, it will bridge, the, bridge the two. Having access to data will hopefully uh, uh, accelerate the due diligence processes, which will lead to a reduction in cost, uh, like time is money, as we as we as we like to say. Um, so reduction in cost, uh, and also because we are like targeting sustainable infrastructure, better confidence for the market, less greenwashing, uh, and therefore really channeling uh, more funds, those green funds that we've been talking about, towards those infrastructure. And therefore, it's really like 
a snowball, e a snowball effect. So transparency and data. Uh, then credibility. Uh, credibility is really what we're trying to do with this project again. Uh, first, like this platform and then the verified process. So we have like uh, this verification will give credibility to the projects that are uh, that are claiming the sustainability uh, component on the FAST. And the last one, which we've been uh, saying over again, it's a bit like addressing this, this moving targets of those multiple frameworks, multiple standards, which FAST, again, is trying to do. We're not re reinventing the wheel. So it will be a dynamic process, obviously. But FAST will always like have like the latest latest standards, latest uh, latest develop latest indicators, uh, so that we all talk the same language, and which again goes back to the standardization, the transparency, the data, and the credibility. And I think all this will enable really to channel uh, funds towards uh, sustainable uh, towards sustainable infrastructure. And so I think to conclude uh, to conclude this, what is needed obviously. Uh, is the uptake like obviously we need projects to uptake we need projects to uptake the fast infra label to lead to this uh, to, to this uh, uh, snowball uh, snowball effect so we need uh, the projects to uptake the label we need funds those green funds to uptake the label implement it in their mandates we need the PPP units to update to uptake this label and all this will work I think in synergy thanks François Thank you, uh, Morgan. Uh, uh, and indeed, just maybe to reemphasize very quickly, uh, beyond the, the, the sort of initial stage of uh, facilitating or, or f simplifying the, uh, the transaction at the uh, initial stage of a project life, I think this, this label will also facilitate the, uh, the ensuing stages, whether it's monitoring or reporting through the set of data that would have been assembled and curated in the data repository that the Bloomberg and GIB are currently uh, working on or uh, uh, indeed facilitate as well refinancing and here if I sort of put my other hat of uh, uh, CEO of uh, a, an infrastructure investor association I can tell you this is an important uh, dimension for, for, for investors that are rightly concerned with issues about liquidity uh, the capacity to effectively exit a, a project in a uh, unlisted project finance uh, infrastructure market so so all of this should be addressed and facilitated through the label, thereby contributing to uh, attract more uh, money from uh, institutional investors that may be currently a bit uh, shy about uh, jumping in uh, the, the, this market. Uh, and, and just an, another a very quick precision, the, the governance has been set up so as to uh, provide a, a, a good balance between public and private, emerging and developing economies, and uh, developed economies. And it's all inspired by the Green Bond Principle. So we've really tried to uh, take the best out of existing frameworks or principles to uh, make for a both an effective and, and a balanced uh, approach to uh, implementing this label. Now, uh, turning to uh, Jean-Christophe, uh, uh, how do you see uh, the, 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 the perspectives for uh, PPP uh, specialists, PPP units to uh, effectively appropriate this ready-to-use uh, assessment uh, framework? Well, it's definitely something that's uh, worthwhile promoting. Uh, we, as WAP, have uh, joined the executive committee of the Fast Infra uh, platform and uh, we're ready to stream, uh, to, to, to promote that uh, with, with our network of PPP units that today we are counting 60 country PPP units and I think once we start also uh, accessing sub-country, uh, sub, uh, uh, sub-national PPP units, this will be a really interesting tool for municipalities, for regional uh, projects. Uh, imagine cross-border PPPs also, how they can benefit from having a harmonized standard. I think that's a big opportunity there to seize, to be able to interface with, uh, with similar standards. And uh, once we have this clear with the, with the framework of the asset classes and what is sustainable in these different asset classes, I think then it's a promising tool that will enable a better project pipeline that uh, it's cheaper to get finance if you have sustainable projects. And, and it's not just because it's SDG aligned, but because as if you do it, and we call that next level PPP, you know, SDG driven, but also climate res for climate in uh, resident infrastructure, you're actually de-risking the project. 
and it's good for the public perception also of the PPP. If, if you have proper stakeholder management, people will be more comfortable. And where I just extracted Atar from the conversation in the room next door where the Global Council of PPP Unit had was convening, this was the question that was addressed there. It's really fascinating. This is what is the biggest preoccupation for some government PPP units. And I think that this tool can be an excellent uh, vehicle, a good platform to actually roll out better projects that have better public acceptance. We do that for the beneficiaries, not just for short-term political gain or for private sector to uh, have the next deal. No, I think we've all shaped up private, public, have understood that for the beneficiaries we need to have long-term good solutions. And this is a good tool for dispute avoidance to make sure that we are all aligned on the sustainability criteria. Thank you, uh, Jean-Christophe. Turning now to, to Henri. So we've heard about the sort of a short-term immediate benefits expected for, for, for investors by uh, <coughs> taking up this uh, label and uh, uh, showing or demonstrating the compliance with the, the, the corresponding criteria, how it could help them uh, uh, raise uh, uh, additional financing, but there might be uh, uh, maybe further far-reaching benefits linked with the uh, uh, the dissemination of the label, and I'm thinking of potentially influencing the, the position of uh, uh, regulators or uh, uh, the, the prudential uh, capital charge treatment. Could you maybe elaborate on, on more indirect, further uh, <coughs> potential uh, uh, positive uh, uh, sort of takeaways uh, or, or, or fallback of this initiative? Uh, absolutely, to touch on my, uh, you know, almost favorite, uh, you know, subject. Uh, so regulatory treatment of infrastructure has been something that the hub has been trying to work on for, for a few years now. It's a complex topic, uh, and so for those of you that are not uh, well versed in sort of Basel insurance regulations, essentially at the moment there there is no definition, except in a few regions, including Europe, definition of infrastructure. Uh, it's actually so complicated, I mean, as we we're talking about the alphabet soup, that this year the G20 asked us to do a full report on just mapping out all the taxonomies and definition of infrastructure. Um, and you're like, well, okay, well, then we don't have a definition of infrastructure. What's the issue? Um, same thing here. We don't have a definition of sustainable infrastructure. You know, that's, that's okay. But actually, when it comes to regulation, the fact that we don't have that data, the fact that we don't have this definition means that regulators cannot, even if they wanted to, they cannot actually develop um, specific uh, regulatory treatment for infrastructure specifically. We know that infrastructure is less risky than most of the other loans out there. We have some data for this, but the data is not good enough for regulators. And I think one of the key, um, one of the potential benefit of this is that by having more data, well, it actually will facilitate discussion with regulators. Many of them are interested, very interested in sort of considering a specific treatment for sustainable infrastructure because you, you're kind of mixing up two different things. A, infrastructure is less risky, even though it doesn't have currently, as I say, any, regula any regulation linked to that. And obviously, sustainable infrastructure uh, will, will actually sort of, uh, you know, create more stability overall, hence more fiscal stability. So for a regulator, that should be a, a done deal. Uh, but at the moment, again, we're facing the issue of lacking definitions in data. Uh, and I think, the, I mean, this label and potentially others, like I say, I don't, I don't necessarily think that we have to choose a winner uh, at the moment. But what is critical is that we start collecting the data and we start focusing on those aspects on every project. That will then enable us collectively to be able to discuss with regulator and actually get extra benefits by actually getting that recognized uh, on the on the basel for for banking or insurance rate regulator uh, so that's really on the regulation side and i think i just wanted to jump on on one of the aspects that you that you mentioned i mentioned as well is really the exit thinking about exit strategy for the initial investors i thought most most of you are working on greenfield projects uh, etc but really i think investors when it comes for like institutional insurers etc there's massive appetite uh, for green infrastructure. But those investors cannot, will never be able to go down to a project level. Very rarely. I mean, you need like a really massive asset. 
they, they don't have the capacity to evaluate. They actually do need to have labels that tell them that this portfolio or you know, this company actually has green infrastructure projects. And then they will be able to invest. Uh, and we're talking about a huge amount of capital. Uh, but again, they will, they are, they're desperate for green, but they're not able to do that, that due diligence themselves. Uh, and that's where I think that label could really benefit by creating, you know, pool of projects, sometimes even across borders, uh, that will actually be very attractive to those secondary markets. And secondary markets, as I say, it's almost like real estate, right? You, when you buy a house, you always have to think about the resale, uh, resale value, right? And that's where you start being able to invest in, you know, things that will actually increase the value of that, uh, of that asset. And I think that's where institutional investors are um, uh, waiting. And, and like I said, they're very, very eager to have more projects to invest in. And I think that type of label will really sort of enable uh, more investment from their perspective. Indeed, thank you, Henri. And I can testify again that institutional investors are, are very much uh, expecting and looking forward to that type of label to help them inform and guide their investment allocation uh, uh, decisions. Um, Atta, now, assuming uh, well, the, the, the Egyptian PPP unit effectively takes on a, a, a label like Fast Infra, how do you see the uh, the, 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 the narrative in terms of benefits for the broader development of the uh, Egyptian infrastructure and economy? How could it help uh, attracting more and more quality foreign direct investment, for example? Uh, first, Francois, I want to thank you very much for having me on this panel because actually I learned more and a lot <laughs> over on, the, on the fast infra and actually a lot of clarification. Uh, I gained a lot of answers for, the, for this clarification and it corrected some of my misunderstanding, let me say. As you are talking over this plan, I was thinking under my back head how to include this uh, verified first fast infra label into the, the terms of reference of my advisors. So their success is to provide this verification to the project that they claim to be green. So this will be the outcome uh, that they will be measured uh, successful uh, accordingly. So uh, I will need a lot of uh, more information on how to include this into uh, my terms of reference given to the uh, uh, advisors because normally we get the, our advisors not discrete, we call them in a consortium. So all of them will be caught accountable for the success of the project from the technical, environmental, financial and legal and everything. So I would, I'm not just thinking how to include this to be the final outcome of a project that was correctly or properly uh, studied, structured, and before sending it to the market and to the investors. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Atta. That's a very promising and encouraging perspective. We, we have a few minutes left. If there's any question or request for clarification from the audience, that that's the moment now to uh, raise your hand. We have a microphone that can roam. Well, you can also come up here and take <laughs> the floor here. <laughs> if not, uh, let me then conclude with a few words. And again, you, you have a, uh, the, the flyers with the, the indication of the websites to refer to uh, available uh, on the first uh, road table. But let me, uh, <laughs> I'd like to, to, to emphasize that this fast infra label, this is the first dimension of a broader initiative that we undertook at uh, uh, fast infra group. Uh, obviously, the, the label is a, a keystone, a, a key dimension, uh, but we are also working on a collaborative digital open source platform. It's not enough that a project be labeled uh, sustainable. It also has to make economic sense. And for that, you have to exchange a lot of data to uh, assess, uh, measure, mitigate uh, risks uh, involved in a, a, a project. Uh, <coughs> uh, you have to connect the various stakeholders from uh, sponsors, developers, public procuring authorities, uh, investors, financiers, insurers, rating agencies, you name it. And, and this is a, a very 
time-consuming and costly exercise. So, so much so that in practice only big projects, the kind of which are directly supported by MDBs or DFIs can effectively achieve this type of uh, uh, well, exchange, data, uh, information, uh, channeling and processing. So that's where we aim to come up with a complementary tool to the label through this digital platform that we're currently uh, working on to uh, speed up transactions so as, so as to speed up transitions. And if it lives up to expectations, we, we're currently working on it with a, 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 an array of uh, uh, well, <coughs> market platform specialists, uh, I, I would really uh, hope that it can be a game changer, a, a sort of uh, uh, market infrastructure for the infrastructure market, uh, specifically dedicated to uh, facilitating the financing and refinancing and closing of uh, sustainable infrastructure projects, the one that ha would have been labeled uh, in the first place to uh, accelerate the uh, financing uh, by, by the market. So I encourage you all to uh, uh, give a look to uh, those uh, resources, uh, fast infra or <laughs> fastinfragroup.org or fastinfragroup, fastinfralabel dot org uh, and please take a flyer before you leave and and, and by all means uh, uh, consider uh, well submitting any project now is the right time to do so to be among the ones that would uh, effectively test and and uh, and help ramp up this initiative which by the way will also be presented and disseminated at the upcoming cop 28 uh, uh, session in dubai in uh, a month and a half so thank you very much and please uh, continue uh, uh, sort of looking into the, 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 the next stage and next updates of this initiative.